Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're on to level two of Get Good at Blender. So these are exercises to help you understand the techniques that go into 3D modeling. And they're meant to be incremental, so the ones before this should be slightly easier, the ones after this will be harder. You can find all this list in the playlist in the description, along with other free courses, as well as links to my website in the description. And where possible, I keep all my courses free. So a particular thank you to all those that watch the adverts because that helps me to keep these courses free. So as usual, I'll be showing you the shape, have a go at it, and then I'll show you how I made it afterwards. And I may give you a hint. So here's the first one, a fairly simple shape. Your hint is the inset tool, have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully this one didn't catch you out. It's meant as a slight introduction to this level. So I'll press shift right click to move my cursor into position and shift A to add a cube. So shift A to add and then cube. So my cube appears inserted into my ground plane that I've set up already. You can set your own ground plane up if you like with shift A, add and then plane and just scale it up. So I know that this cube is two blender units, which is actually two meters. And you can find that out in the scene data just here. So scene properties, units, and we're using metric. Little extra tip for you there. But also you can press N on your keyboard and go to item and you've got the item properties here. So I know that this is two meters by two meters by two meters. So I know that this is inserted into the ground one meter because it's directly in the middle. So I can press G, Z, then one, and move it exactly above the floor. So it's touching the floor perfectly. A few small hints there, hopefully they're helpful to you. Okay, I'll press full stop on my numpad or period key on the numpad if you're in America, and that will zoom into my object and then into edit mode with tab. You can also go into edit mode up here. With face mode selected, you can press three or press face mode up here. I can select that top face and press I to inset. So I to inset will create this tool and it will only go inwards and it should be uniform. So all these faces should be the same size. Then I can press E to extrude and pull it downwards. I to inset and pull it inwards and E to extrude to pull it upwards. It's surprising how often that catches beginners out understanding how to create these sort of crevices. There are different ways of doing it as well, but I find this is the easiest. Okay, so hopefully you're comfortable with that. Let's go on to level two. Okay, so here is level two, basically a wheel. And my tip for this one is do remember to mirror. Have a go at that. Okay, so that shouldn't be too complicated for you, but you may have got caught out with the mirror and I'll show you why. So let's shift right click over here, shift A to add, and this time it's a cylinder. I'll just scale it in the Z axis to around there and grab it in the Z and move it above my plane. Now the difficulty comes when we rotate it. So R, and then we know it's the X axis because that's the red line across the middle. So R, X, 90. That will rotate it in the X axis, 90 degrees. So R, X, then 90. And let's grab it and move it above the plane. Now I normally use the auto mirror tool and that's really handy, but I'm going to do it in the really basic way just so everybody understands what we're doing. So into edit mode, control R to do a loop cut. So control R and then double left click to set it in the center. Now if I go into wireframe with Z on my keyboard and go to wireframe, let's go to side view as well with three on my numpad and I'm going to select these faces over here. So I need to be in face mode, which is three, or you can press face mode up here and I can box select half of my shape. Then I can press delete faces. Okay, so I've got half a shape and my pivot point is in the center. I notice I call it a pivot point. That's what many other programs call it. In Blender, it's called the object center. And that's where we're going to mirror around. So if I press the mirror command here, so if I go to my modifiers here and then add modifier, mirror modifier. Now I've added a mirror modifier, but nothing's happening. And this is where we've got to look in the axis section here. And it's mirroring in the X axis. So if I select all my shape, grab it in the X, you can see that there is actually a mirror there and you can see it is mirroring. I'm gonna right click to cancel any movement there. So let's change the axis to the Y axis. So I'll untick the X and tick the Y and it's still not showing. I'll press G to grab and you can see it is mirroring but it seems to be mirroring in the Z axis. So this is all very confusing. I'll right click so it goes back to where it was. Let's try the Z axis and that one, let's just go to solid mode, is working nicely. So have a think for a moment why that might be happening. I'll just untick the wire as well. Now, if I press N on my keyboard and go to item again and back into object mode, we can see that there is an X rotation. So the local axis to this, 
the local Z axis is still going that way. If I put my movement gizmos on, and that shows the global orientation, so obviously the Z axis is going straight up like that, but if I change this to local, you can see its local Z axis is going across this way. And that can be very confusing for people because this is using the local axis. We can actually reset our location. If I'm in object mode, so I'm already in object mode, and press Control A, I can apply the rotation. Now you can see the mirror's gone funny again, and the local is saying blue is up, which is the Z axis. I'll change this back to global now, and I'll go back to my normal select box. And I'm going to change this to the Y axis. So it's mirroring on the Y axis now, which is going across this way, which we can see from our Cartesian coordinates up there. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too long-winded for you. Now we can go into our shape and do similar things. So Control R here to set a loop cut, and three to go to face mode, and Alt left click on one of the lines going across to select this face loop. So I'll Alt left click on one of those lines to select all those, and scale them up. And that creates that sort of curve. You could go further and go to edge mode with two, select that inner edge loop, and scale that up as well with S and you've got more of a curve. And finally, we've got that inset here. So interface mode with three, select that face and I to inset. Now something strange is happening. Remember I said about the inset tool being uniform? Well, that does depend on the object scale. So let's go back into object mode and look at our item again, and you can see I've changed the scale. So I need to reset the scale in order for that inset to work properly. I'll just undo what I've done and go back into object mode, control A and set the scale back into edit mode and I to inset. And you can see it's insetting uniformly or how we'd expect it to. Then I can press E to extrude and pull it in. Okay, so there was a few things to catch you out there, but the most important thing to remember is for things to work properly, it's a good idea to set your rotation and set your scale, then your modifiers and your tools won't do unusual things. If in doubt, go to object mode and make sure your scale is set to one and your rotation is set to zero. Okay, so there was a fair bit to catch you out there. If that was difficult for you, then try and have another go from the start to really embed those ideas. Anyway, onto level three. So here's level three. Your hint is use the bevel command, but I have started with a sphere. Don't worry if that's confusing, just have a go at the shape anyway. Okay, so let's bring our cursor to the side again. Shift right click. Shift A to add, and let's add a UV sphere. I'll press G, Z, one. So grab in the Z axis one, and in this case, one meter, and press enter. Let's go into edit mode, and I want to extrude this top section here. So let's press Alt A to deselect everything. Make sure I'm in face mode, three on my keyboard, and C to circle select is probably the easiest way, and then I can just paint the selection. So C to circle select. With circle select, the tools are down the bottom here, but left click to select, as you can see there, middle click to delete any selection, and right click to come out of circle select mode. At this point, I can go to side view and extrude upwards to about there. Now I've got this problem at the top that they're not all flat, and I need them to be flat so it's a bit easier to control. An easy way to align all these faces so they're flat in the Z axis is scale Z zero and it flattens the ball out and takes the medium point. So you can see this outer edge loop went up slightly and these inner faces went downwards. Now there's a couple of ways we can do the top. The quickest way, but slightly confusing to some, is to press E for extrude, scale it out, and that looks a bit odd, that's why it catches a few people out, and then E to extrude again and pull it upwards. I'll undo that because there's another way. I can just E to extrude upwards, and then whilst in face mode, select this face loop by selecting an edge going across, then E to extrude, scale it, but you can see it's scaling upwards as well. We want to press Shift Z to stop it scaling in the Z axis. So Shift Z or Shift whichever axis you don't want to scale in, in this case. And about there. Lastly, let's select that edge loop going across there and scale it inwards. And then interface mode again, C to circle select, so we can select this group of faces here, right click to come out of that mode, and E to extrude downwards. Now why I've said the bevel command is you can see this has a slightly tapered or smooth transition into the neck of this bottle, or potion bottle perhaps. So let's 
go into edge mode with two, alt left click on that edge loop and control B. And then we've got that nice smooth transition and we can use the wheel if we want to make it even smoother. And there we go. Okay, hopefully you're keeping up. Let's try level four. Okay, so this looks like a bit of a monstrosity. Now I want you to try and do this without using the mirror. And your tip is extrude individual. If you're not sure how to get there, instead of pressing E to extrude, try Alt E to extrude. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Shift right click to move my cursor across to this point and Shift A to add a cube. GZ1, grab in the Z axis one, and it's perfectly on top of my plane. So let's do this top section first. Into edit mode, three to select face mode, and select that top face. I to inset, and it's doing it nice and uniformly because my scale is set to one, and around there. E to extrude to pull it down, I to inset again, E to extrude to pull it up. Now obviously I want to inset again, but I'm going to show you that you can press E then S, which is the same as the inset, but you can pull it outwards as well. But there's E then S is the same as inset, but you can go beyond the boundaries. E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude. Okay, so we've got that weird thing in the middle there. Now I've got to try and extrude each of these out. And that's why I'm saying extrude individual. So still in face mode, which is three on your keyboard, you can alt left click on one of these edges going across here to select that face loop across there. Now, if I press E now, it extrudes them all together. So I'm going to undo that. But if I press alt E, I get this menu and I can extrude individual faces. And now when I move my mouse, it will extrude out those faces individually. So I can get to that point nice and easily. So Alt E, a useful command. Let's select these top faces now and press I and we've got an inset. Now do bear in mind, you do have controls down the bottom left here. So if I bring up this hidden panel, you've got lots of options here and sometimes that can help you out. They're not necessary in this case, but bear that in mind for future episodes. Lastly, E to extrude and pull all those down. Okay, so there we have it. Hopefully this wasn't too big a jump. Do let me know in the comments below how you're getting on. Lots of people said they're too easy, but this is meant to be for beginners, so you can wait for the later levels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.